Conditional statements. A conditional statement is a statement that can be written in the form if then. Our symbology we use for it in math is a letter with an arrow pointing to another letter. That means if P then Q. For an example, we could say if an angle's measure is less than 90 degrees, then it is acute. Our hypothesis is the P part, which says an angle's measure is less than 90. Our conclusion, it is acute, is the Q part. The truth value for that is if an angle's measure is less than 90, then it is acute. That is a true statement. Converse. Okay, if you remember from the inverse, we had the P pointing at the Q. For the converse, we flip those two around. We take the conclusion and we switch its place with the hypothesis. Our statement then becomes, if, it is, if an angle is acute, then its measure is less than 90. This one also happens to be true. Next is the inverse. Notice, do you remember these statements or these symbols from our last example or our last notes? That's the negation. That means negate P and negate Q. We do that by inserting the word not on these, in this example. If an angle's measure is not less than 90, then it is not acute. That is also a true statement. The contrapositive. Here we do both things. Notice the Q statement is first, the P statement is second, and they both have been negated. For this, we switch them both front and back, so now the hypothesis is at the end and the uh, conclusion is at the beginning, and they both have been negated. If an angle is not acute, then its measure is not less than 90. This would be true. Write the following statement as a conditional statement. Then identify the hypothesis and conclusion and finally write the conditional. Here's our conditional statement. If a polygon has five sides, then it is a pentagon. Our hypothesis is a polygon having five sides. Our conclusion is then it is a pentagon. Here's another example to determine the truth value of a statement in some different situations. These can be a little bit tricky, so you may, may, may want to rewatch this a time or two. Our original statement is, if you earn 100%, then Mr. Rude will give you an A. You took a test. You earned a 100%. Mr. Rude gives you an A. Should this happen? So in other words, is this true? or is this false? What we've been told is when you get 100 percent you will get an A. You took the test, you got a 100 percent and you received the A. That is a true. So we have our true. Let's check the second statement. On the second one you earned a 98 percent. Mr. Rude gave you an A. This is the one to be careful of because did this match our hypothesis? The hypothesis says 
if you own 100%. In this example, we actually earned a 98%. So by the rule that we have at the very beginning, we have no idea what happens when you earn 98%. We know that if you get 100%, you get an A. In this case, you earned a 98. We do not have the rule up here that covers 98%. So for that reason, Mr. Rood giving you an A is absolutely fine because there was no rule behind what should happen. In our final example, it says, you earned 100%. Mr. Rood gave you a B. This is very different than the second example. In the second example, we got the 98%. He could give you an A, he could give you a B, he could give you whatever he wanted. But in this example, that's not the case because you earned 100%. We have a rule that says when you earn 100%, you get an A. On this test, you earned a 100% and Mr. Rude gave you a B. This is a false example. He has violated the rule, so that should not happen. When you get 100%, you should get an A. He gave you a B, so this is a false situation. If you have any questions about these, make sure to re-watch them and feel free to ask me any questions you need to in class.